Hello and welcome back students to the next lesson in our AS Level Human Geography course. Today we will be looking at the factors of population change. So as we have seen earlier on the course, um, most events that occur in geography are going to be classified with the impacts um, that are known as SEEP impacts because it's an acronym standing for social, economic, environmental and political factors which will um, sort of alter the situation of an occurrence happening. So the S stands for social, the E for economic, the other E for environmental, and the final P for political. We should have already gone over this. So when we look at, um, for example, in our 15 markers in the exam, when we're going to have a question um, to discuss, we're going to have to compare advantages and disadvantages, really. And these advantages and disadvantages are going to be classified as SEEP advantages and disadvantages. So if you were to mention that in the exam that this is a social impact and this is an environmental impact, you would then pick up the marks. So this is how we're going to classify all the factors. OK, first, we're going to check out the social factors. And the first social factor is religion. OK, so we have religion. So, for example, like Catholicism and Islam, which um, encourage families to have kids and also teaches families to not, um, not use contraception because of different beliefs. So therefore, um, since the Bible may say that, um, you know, children are the fruit of the womb and that family should have many of them, uh, more religious families, such as in Mexico, where there's a high percentage of Catholics, will have more kids. Hence, the birth rate will increase. OK, the next social factor is healthcare, And of course, it's logical that if you have an improved healthcare, that the population will probably live longer. And also, if they do have disease, they can treat them easily with health care. And the death rate is going to decrease because not as many people are going to be dying as opposed to the amount that would die if there was uh, no or you know worse health care in place. OK, and we also have education, finally. And education is mainly education on fertility. This isn't schooling education where they teach about math, science, etc. So the more educated country is on fertility, it's going to know how to use methods of contraception and that it may be... Um, more resourceful and you know more economical to have a smaller family for example the families in thailand that used to in the 19 sort of 70s 1960s where used to have six or seven kids per family have now been educated that it's much easier and that it's up to them to have a smaller family which is easier to control so therefore with all these different social factors the population can increase or decrease okay next we're going to look at economic factors now, the main one really is people's income. If individuals don't have enough money and they're not going to be able to raise the child um, because simply they can't pay for it. So, um, for example, today in modern society, if a family, um, it, I think it's £150 that's going to, uh, sorry, £150,000 it's going to cost to have a kid to raise it from birth all the way to university or 18 plus. So if families now know that they can't afford them, um, of course, the birth rate is going to decrease as they're not going to bother having another kid that they can't pay for. So it also, um, in developing countries, works in the same way. If people need more income, they may increase the birth rate because they want more kids in order to work on their farms or more as producers so that they can increase their income. So in developing worlds, they may want to decrease the birth rate due to income. And developing worlds, they want to increase the birth rate so they get more money from work and labour. OK, environmental factors. Uh, the weather is a big factor on population change because the weather, believe it or not, can cause um, people to die. It has a greater impact on, uh, I'd say, infants and the older citizens of an area because if the country is successful, um, able to you know have weather extremes um, heat stroke and hypothermia can really harm the population also the hazards of the spread of disease are a big problem because if a country has more hazards that can spread disease the death rate is of course going to pick up so for example um, Bangladesh is a country that is um, has a very low sea level that's quite near the sea level and it's as a result it is you know prone to flooding so due to all the um, water that can sort of infect all the um, um, areas in Bangladesh where they will receive water so for example in the piping or by people uh, walking down the street maybe taking a drink from 
contaminated water, cholera, can then um, spread into the people from Bangladesh. And as a result, they will have cholera. And if they don't have the correct health care, they may die. So, of course, it will decrease the um, death rate. Also, the risk of natural disaster is a big problem for um, the, the death rate as well, as people will die more often in places that have a higher risk of the natural disaster. For example, the earthquakes that happen more often in Haiti because they're on some fault lines will mean that their death rate is going to increase as they're going to be more prone to these natural disasters as opposed to the UK, which very rarely will ever experience an earthquake. The final example is famine, which is more people will die if they're unable to in, um, obtain nourishment. And that kind of links into the weather. If they don't have the right weather conditions in order to um, be able to grow the crops, there will be a famine. And as a result, people will die. So all these environmental factors really decrease the birth rate. Some examples are shown here down below. OK, now finally, the political factors. Population policies that are set by the country can then alter the birth rate. For example, China had their one-child policy where families were strongly encouraged, um, in fact forced many times, to only have one child. So, of course, the birth rate decreased greatly and the population did continue to increase, but the replacement level is, of course, decreasing. So two parents are only having one kid and that's really slowed down the birth rate. Um, so now... Um, not as many children are going to be born and the population will decrease over time in the long run if not as many children are going to be born. Also, war is a political factor, which you know speaks for itself. If you have a war, your death rates are going to increase, seeing as your soldiers are going to be dying when they are battling against other countries. Okay, so we have gone through all these SEEP factors of population change now. I would like you to attempt these questions. Once you are done, um, unpause the video if you haven't done so already. Then go ahead, check your answers, and yeah, I would close your notes books at this point if you haven't already, so you can attempt them. Okay, so here are the answers. If you have got all four right, or have you got most of the answers right and are happy with how you are doing, I would move on to the next video in the playlist, or if not, search it on my channel. Otherwise, I would consider you to... Um, go over your notes and revise slightly, or if not, rewind the video, pick up where you have made an error on, and then move on. Okay, so this has had been the end of the lesson. Um, move on to the next part where we'll be looking at factors of fertility rates, which are closely linked to the factors of population change, so it should not be that difficult. Also, check out the rest of my channel for um, videos on other A-level subjects which you may be doing to help you in the run-up to your exams. So thank you very much, and I will see you next time.